What's up? We're in Thailand, Bangkok, and we're going to be doing a little review on all the stuff that happened on our trip. So, don't miss it. Check it out. ま、What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamato Domashi podcast. Sawatika. So, we go. We are in Bangkok. This is a cop. I oh, know, the cars for the girls, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, <laughs> my car. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we're in Bangkok, and uh, we've been doing all sorts of fun stuff uh, as we thought we'd do a podcast while we're here together in person, um, talking about some of the stuff we've been up to. And uh, yeah, kind of just our experiences of Thailand. Um, some cool stuff that's happened on the trip, so we're gonna get into that. So enjoy. So, first topic. Where do we start? What do you think? Where's the best place to start about this trip? Probably, probably the purpose, right? Kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, for those of you that might have seen already, if you haven't, check out the video um, we posted already. So, Ensign has a, a special friend, and I'm gonna let you guys hear from himself, kind of like how he met him. He, there's, we've done a podcast on it already, so we won't go into too much detail, but. Um, yeah, when you. Yeah, well, one of my uh, good friends, almost one of my, I consider a brother, uh, Richard Matsuda, he uh, called me one day and he said, I have a very special friend that I want you to meet. He told me he's Thai and he knew that I go to Thailand and I really love Thailand. So Richard thought that it'd be a good thing for me and him to meet. And we met in Japan and yeah, we. We went out to bars, we went out to restaurants, uh, we hung out a lot. And, and the friend that he introduced me to was is actually the son of the king, the current king of Thailand right now. And you know, so in other words, yeah, we call him the prince, but we call him Fak. His name is Vachare Sorn, but to make it short, we call him Fak. And yeah, we hung out and Vak and I really got along together really well. So we just kept in touch over the months. Mm -hmm. And last month when I went up to Ishikawa came to bring uh, goods to the people that need, you know, supplies after their big earthquake, uh, Vak made a comment on my Instagram about that's awesome what you're doing. And I noticed he did a lot of stuff in, in Thailand with the children's hospital. So I mentioned to him that maybe on my next trip to Thailand, we can get together. And you know, so, so actually the biggest movement was um, bringing um, goods, uh, Japanese snacks to the kids in uh, Thailand. And so I went and bought a whole suitcase full of goods, of food. Literally a whole suitcase. Yeah, literally <laughs> a whole suitcase. I had to, actually, I I was able to bring two two suitcases, but I only needed one because we can wash the clothes. You know, the washings, the laundry service is awesome yeah. here. So we're gonna, so I was gonna bring one luggage, but just so I could bring sweets to the kids in Bangkok, I actually brought another luggage and filled it all with uh, all kinds of candies that I thought that the kids in Thailand would enjoy. Uh, stuff you only can get in Japan. And the funny thing is, is from his side, he's the one who mentioned that he wanted to see, meet my Thai family, um, the gym that I support, or the gym that I help build. And you know, that actually became the, one of the biggest things in the trip. And unfortunately, Vak has a very busy schedule, so. Mm. The Georgia's Hospital was, he, we were supposed to go either today or tomorrow, mm -hmm. but he had a sudden uh, change of plans and he had to go all the way up to Chiang Mai, which is really far away. Yeah. So we decided that we're going to just get the sweets, the Japan sweets to him. And you also brought some. Yes. From, yeah. Some English sweets. Some English sweets, some Japan sweets, and they would come pick it up from us so they can distribute it. So for me, you know, it's nice to see the kids smile and, you know, the the surprises on their face, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is to get the goods to the kids. So Vok is probably going to be able to do that for us, and I appreciate that. So yeah, but the trip to the gym was just oh, unreal. amazing. Yeah, unreal. I think the coolest for me, the coolest thing about that was just seeing everyone's reaction because everyone in the gym had no idea this was happening. It was a complete surprise. You guys could probably sense from the video, and 
just seeing how like the grandma, um, Santian's wife, mama's, um, you know, just seeing how they reacted to him, but then also how he reciprocated that yeah, kindness. Yeah, the, the heart, the kindness in his heart <laughs> yeah. that he showed was amazing. For someone with a royal background to be that sort of personable was actually really encouraging for humanity. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the amazing thing is he didn't just, you know, go through the motion and say hi. He sincerely yeah. greeted people. Even when I introduced him to, there's a taxi driver kit that I've been using for the last decade and I trust him. He's like part of family to me. And when I introduced him to kit, even then, just a taxi driver, mm. he really went to out of his way to say hello, to greet him. Yeah. You know, and my idea was not letting anyone know is I, for me, Vok is Vok. He's a prince of Thailand, but I see him as a friend. And so, of course, I'm, I'm going to respect his, his status, but I'm also going to remember that he's my friend. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want, you know, the gym, my taxi driver kit to treat him like, no, for my I, my idea was I didn't want him to be treated like the prince of Thailand. I wanted to be treated as my dear friend. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe I need to say some apologies because I didn't. For me, I was just thinking on my side that I want him them to see. No, I want Vok to see the gym as it is. I didn't want him to see an artificial gym that's going to be presented because the prince of Thailand is coming. Mm. And that was my idea. But later on, after. Vok left when I was talking to mom and them. What they made me realize is, instant Thailand, yeah. when you're greeting royalty or Just you know someone guess. like the prince of Thailand, um, even something as simple as the clothes they were wearing, mm -hmm. and you know the way they were gonna greet him is is, and I just really hope that in in no way did I create any disrespect towards Vok at all. And of course, I did create a little bit of complication for the gym. And it was funny because the disappointment of not being able to be presented, present themselves to the Prince of Thailand the proper way. Uh, there's a mixture of just this joy and happiness and disbelief that mm -hmm. I just brought someone that was so dear to their hearts, mm -hmm. to their gym. You know, and, you know, for me... I I don't know if I actually regret not telling them or I don't regret because I think the surprise, the nat the that natural reaction of surprise that they had was priceless. Yeah, you know. So and I also think from the other side of things, seeing how Va took like in dealt with that situation as well. Did, yeah, showed kind of what kind of person. So he much is class well. and so much. Yeah, it shows the size of his heart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe Mama kept saying, Ensign, you don't understand. For Thai people, that's not right. Yeah, because of the Thai... Because yeah. one thing you always... Like, Thailand is better than anywhere else, almost, is hospitality. You oh, know, they yeah. are so... The most hospitable people, wherever you go. It doesn't matter what you're doing. And I think there was there's almost that sense of pride in it. And then, so for them not to, like, have everything ready. But then at the same time, on the flip side, you could tell they were just buzzing that they've had this experience it was just like unbelievable like you yeah. never, they never expected that in their lives and especially you know the older grandma you could tell like she walked right up to him yeah. and and felt, showed her love and care towards him yeah and he accepted it really nicely yeah we obviously can't speak Thai but it was almost he was kind of aware that, that she had gone for like a hospital appointment and it almost seemed like he was like checking the cow that went like asking like kind of you can kind of see in the video he was he was um, just sort of talking to her like, like how you would talk to to someone of that age so yeah it was unreal experience to say the least yeah um, and you know the thing that I see is I see Vak as a friend but also if you change my views and see Vak as possibly the next king of Thailand I think I believe in my heart that he'd be like one of the greatest kings yeah uh, his, I know his grandfather and his father are great kings, and I, he I heard her, from what I hear from the great grapevine, his grandfather was really loved. Yeah, yeah. And with the warmness in his heart, with the, the all the experiences that Vak has been through, you know, moving from Thailand to the UK to, America. to the to America, mm -hmm. I mean, he understands all aspects 
of life. He understands poverty. He understands the loneliness. He understands sadness. He understands, you know, a lot more than I think if you were just born and always was in a royal mm -hmm. family. And I think that oh, the, the amount of experience that he has, knowledge, and the kindness that he has in his heart, I mean, who that I think he'd be such a huge asset for Thailand. Definitely, I think he'd be such a great ambassador for Thailand. Oh, he is. Yeah. I mean, you, you could you could see the uh, even at the gym it was so hot. Yeah, and I was wearing shorts and t-shirt, and I was still getting yeah. sticky and hot. He was wearing like a long sleeve and a polo shirt, which makes it even worse. Yeah, but he he stayed he and took well. every <laughs> single picture that anyone asked for. Yeah. And he didn't. You had you to know, wrap it up, right? Yeah, I kind of, kind of had to jump in and say, "The last picture, come on, let's go, let's go." He, he had to, you know, get him out of there because I noticed that it was getting really hot for him. But you know, as a fighter, I've seen a lot of other fighters doing autographs for for fans. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm the one, I'm very one that no matter what, where I am or the fan, I show that happiness almost like I'm reciprocating the appreciation of you being a fan of me. So I, I don't, there's no vibe of like, he's causing a nuisance to me. And I've seen fighters, you know, mm. not to name any of them, but some close to me that totally do not like doing that. Mm. And when they, when they, even if they do sign it, the fan can feel that energy. Like, mm. well, I don't want to sign a freaking autograph now. Mm. And I've seen fighters that are very open to it and happy mm -hmm. of, to do it. And Thank you. Vok, no matter how hot Vok was, I could see that he was reciprocating that joy of appreciation that you care about me, that you want to take mm -hmm. a picture, although it was so hot. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, if Vok watches this, I, I, yeah, I thank can't you. thank you enough for um, taking that time out of your busy schedule and showing that love that you have for the Thai people mm -hmm. for to the Santian Noi Gym, which I consider my family. And, I mean, there's no words that I can say that can show the appreciation that I have for what you did. Super that cool. was, so that was like, um, probably almost like the start of the trip. We did stuff yeah. before that, but... Day two, I think that was, maybe day yeah, three. Yeah, well, I almost felt like the trip, trip really didn't kick off until yeah. that happened. Because we were that happened, a bit like, oh, yeah. what do we do? We don't know which day it was going to be. And then it happened. And then it was like, edit everything as quick as possible. <laughs> yeah, and I was looking well, forward. Yeah, like, I was looking forward to doing the, the children's hospital. Yeah. But that alone was like yeah. So I mean, good. I even told you that after yeah. that, if we do nothing else on the trip, it was so worth it. Yeah. So, 100%. but we did have a lot of crazy shit happen on the trip. We I did. Mean. We had a lot of fun as well, and we still got a little bit more food. You know, uh, I don't know when this is getting uploaded. Depends how quick I can turn this around. <laughs> but um, we've got one more day. We're going back to Santiago Noise Gym. See the family, it'd be cool to see their reactions after things have died down a bit. You know, yeah, so tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, see, see kind of what they thought about everything. Um, and then, yeah, and then we'll be both be headed back. But whilst we've been on this trip, we've done loads of fun stuff. Yeah, and one of the big things I want to start off with is the ice plunge, ice bath. Cold plunge. Cold plunge, yeah. So I do it every day in Japan and when I'm in Hawaii, and I feel the health benefits, um, not, uh, mental toughness, uh, what is, well, I mean, the, 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 you look up um, ter, uh, benefits of cold therapy mm. and you'll see all the benefits to it. Not just only the feeling and the legs. <laughs> oh, people man. are really aware of it now because it's all over social media. Yes, right? it is. And people are trying to sell the baths and everything. So if you've got an Instagram account, you've probably seen a cold plunge and kind of what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Or if you follow me. Yeah, uh, you, know, you definitely have seen it. So. And the one we followed, or you followed actually, was uh, called uh, Fast and Fit. And it's right in Bangkok, in the heart of Bangkok. It's right near um, one of the stations, Tonglo. Mm -hmm. Tonglo station of the BTS. And if you guys need a ice bath or, you know, to go in uh, infrared sauna, do some cupping, that place is like, I recommend it so, yeah. 100%. It's clean. It's new, six, like six months? Brand new, yeah. clean. The staff, the, it's run by a, a okay. husband and wife. Both. They're beautiful people. Mm. Even the, the Thai staff they have, she's a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. Super nice, really friendly. Yeah, Makes you feel real comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
it's not a comfortable thing to do for so. yeah, even the members that we run into while we're there everyone was super friendly yeah everyone's super nice and you know they have a good system you, um, you, you can buy packs of it mm -hmm. and you know they're they're really lenient about if I buy one a 10 pack for myself James can use my my, mm -hmm. my plunges so yeah. That's good. That's I mean, yeah if you guys gonna go and find ice bath in Bangkok if you're in Bangkok I recommend 100% highly recommend you um, coming to this Bangkok's a good place to do it because of how friggin hot it is outside you know it's 36 degrees every day and um you know one of the things they asked us in the beginning was do you want to do sauna and <laughs> what do you say you said. yeah i was like oh, yeah you want to do the, the sauna and the cold plunge i'm like oh there's a big sauna out there so we just want cold plunge yeah. <laughs> so every day right we've been getting every up day. half past eight we get on the bts the station the subway um which has got the best air gone in the whole of Thailand um, and then we walk about 15 minutes uh, in the sauna and uh, yeah and then we we do the cold plunge and yeah and, um, I'd never done it before so yeah you kind of freaked out on the first time you know, like I mean I remember I, when I edited the video that I took you you repeated like oh that is so cold that yeah. is so cold you say like twice and you really like straight up you know, the natural reaction is you get in something that's extreme cold, like, I'm out of here. Yeah. And you did. I mean, you did yeah. the normal thing. You I did, did what, thing. 30 seconds in the two degrees, which is the one with all the ice? Yeah, but you know, you know, the thing that I wanted to tell you is that after feeling that extreme, uncomfortable cold, it's amazing that you actually went and tried again. I made it seem like, oh, you got to try it again. Okay, you did 38 seconds, I'll do it more. But most people, after that one shock, it's like, I'm done. Really? Okay. But he actually went back in. And, you know, the, the good thing I noticed about the cold punch, I told you this before, but there's a there's a change in your mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, you, the, I mean, it's, it wasn't bad, but it was normal. Where anything hot, you want to put on the aircon. Anything cold, you want to turn on the jacket, you know. And it's this extreme cold in the cold punch, you want to get out. Yeah. And don't want to go back. That's a normal reaction. And then when you're in it and you go in it, you're almost like that that fight or flight and the natural thing is flight because of the extreme cold but you've actually learned to talk to your mind and try and start telling it how to fight the cold and work through it i see you doing it when you're in there you're yeah. you're, you're like you're fighting with yourself they like, come on stand there you're trying to talk to me you're trying yeah, to trying not, not look at the time just you try know? and think about something yeah. else because i've done it every single day every uh, day you never miss a day you know? yeah i've done three so i did three minutes in 10 degrees for uh, every day. Yep. And then today, <laughs> when I was feeling so shitty, because we went to some bars last night, I, I, and it doesn't drink, but I do drink, so I was having a couple of drinks. And then at the end of the night, I was like, let's get some fried chicken. And I went to this Japanese place, had chicken wings and um, some other shit. You had some fried food right before you went to bed. Huh? <laughs> went to bed, fell asleep, woke up, felt super shitty, was on the toilet, and then... <laughs> got there too much info too, <laughs> too much, much info, info. <laughs> to your mind sorry um and i was like ah oh, this is gonna be difficult and then there was like a whole family surrounding the 10 <laughs> degrees yeah it was funny how the universe worked because you did so good in the 10 yeah the day before yeah i mean like night and day compared to your first time yeah and then so we we're saying i'm i'm thinking like he did so good in the 10 just stay in the 10 that's mm -hmm. good 10 degrees is good enough and like you said, there was yeah, like a family a whole of family there. five kids and all in the ten, and I so I said okay, I'll do first, and we'll wait for them to clear out. And I thought for sure James was going to want to go in the ten, mm -hmm. and I did mine in my the two degree. And after I was done, I was like, okay, let's go check out the five again. They were still doing it, and they were not looking like they're going to be done anytime soon. No, so I was like, you know, I told James, I know how hard it is to get in even the ten. And I thought, just wait, we can wait. And he goes, no, I'll go in the five. And whew, you did super good. We did five, yeah. Check out the video. We're going to probably post it too. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I noticed you're trying to build your mental toughness too because yeah. I know the pain in the hands. Yeah. And because you're now five instead of ten, I kind of told James, you can take your hands out. I'm like the opposite way. When I see people being a pussy, I'm like, put your hands in. Stay in. But... Because I know how much he was already pushing it, I want to try and make it a little easier to to almost like um, what 
give you credit for how much you're already pushing mm-hmm. and say keep you can take your hands out <laughs> just, nope I'm keeping it in so what was that you just you didn't want to I there's like a certain energy I get off you and that's why I think like a lot of your fighters like Yuji Koichi like these guys that really benefit from that especially in the beginning of their career where you're just you're pushing them without pushing them and it's kind of but it's not like in a it's in a very subtle way but it is a push. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. But the, it's quite. I think the, the thing that probably pushed me over the years today was, and why I kind of sucked it up was we walked in, and there was some British dude already in the two degrees <laughs> one. <laughs> oh no, that story! I forgot about that. <laughs> there was a British guy in the two degrees already. And uh, he shouts over to Ensign because they recognize each other, seen each other the other day. He's like, yeah, man, doing six minutes today. And I just see this look in Ensign's eyes and he's like, six minutes? <laughs> yeah, like, 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 look, generally kind of like, kind of annoyed. Like, <laughs> I looked at Ensign and like, fuck doing six minutes? <laughs> so while I'm having, like, you know, while I'm like <laughs> getting ready, let's say, and I don't want to share too much information, um, <laughs> I come back and uh, I see Ensign's already in the ice bath and I'm like, fucking hell, he's got like 30 seconds left. And he's like, I'm doing six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and just that, just being in that kind of environment, it gets you like, fuck yeah. He's You'll like, push yourself he's still too. pushing himself. So like, it like makes me want to push myself. So yeah, I think any, any fighter that like would like think, because for me, I'll never be like a professional athlete. My friends will tell you that. Um, <laughs> but like something like an ice bath is kind of perfect because it gives you that options kind of push yourself and see where you can go like mentally and uh having someone as like legendary for like mental toughness <laughs> in your corner doing it was just like yeah for like a breeze so i do i'm i've been kind of sucking this one up but i'm like fuck i should try and do the two for three minutes tomorrow um so well, we'll- you know what too now is like you've already done the five you could you probably won't want to go back to ten no so you either gotta do five or Two. You know, yeah. but in all honesty, you did the five. There's not much difference with the two. I know. The, the, but psychologically, there is. It feels know. like there is because the two has loads of ice, and maybe it's just like a different feeling with like the ice bird. Like, but it's probably not. It's probably the same. But just, man, yeah, you got you know. But you know what? He's gonna do three minutes tomorrow in the in the two because then that that contrast of when you went in the first time and then we do the next video of what you're doing. Oh my god, it's gonna yeah. be like. Night and day. I know. <laughs> I know but he said, he said to me, like, when we first started doing it, <sighs> yeah, at some point you would just have that feeling of, like, oh no, we've got cold plunge tomorrow. <laughs> like. Wow, Lucky James. Wow. So as you guys can tell, James is really looking forward to this. He's been ranting and raving about how he's excited to go this morning. Uh, more. Here we go. No, you wanted that. Awesome. Oh, okay, breathe. Deep, deep breath. Deep breath. Yeah. Come on, come on. How you feeling? Okay, well, it's 3.30 now. You're at 3.30 already. 30 more seconds, you got four. You get a picture of me smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Smile. Put the four out there. Yeah, a couple pictures. All right. 46, 47, 48. Fuck, you think the club is up? Well, the same as that, yeah? Hands are still shaky. Like, like, hands are like frozen. Hands suck. Suck. Yeah, the hands suck. Four minutes. Yeah. Four minutes. I've done four minutes. You've done four minutes. Take it out. <laughs> Up to you. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Alright, six days straight. Ice punch last day today. James went from in the two degree, he went from thirty seconds to four minutes. Unbelievable. Alright. And I went from three minutes to seven minutes. Never again. Thailand Good yogurt. Is so up and coming. I mean, that's something else I wanted to talk about. Like, the perception of Thailand is... So, every time you, if I tell people I'm going to Bangkok, Thailand, they're like, oh, it's so dirty, and everything like that. 
this place is so fucking clean, <laughs> like for the majority of the part. And then it's like they have such a good contrast of um, like luxury shopping malls, right, with um, affordable food, like really nice food courts. Um, but then you know, there's that you can eat expensive food, you can eat cheap food, and it's just a matter of taste preference for half of it because loads of it tastes good. We went to our worst meal was the most expensive meal. <laughs> Like good company, right? But. Yeah, we, our friend, my friend Odd School, she was here. She was doing refereeing, and she works with the World Muay Thai Association. And she again, just like the third time I think she's been here at the same time that I was. But this is the only time that we've actually got together. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to, we're walking around the food court, and they wanted to eat lobster. I'm like, well, whatever. And that was horrible. Yeah, it sucked. It was just, yeah, it was, it was. Uh, uh, it was so expensive for what it was. Yeah, it was like probably our most expensive meal. Yeah, it was. Ever, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, because you can like eat something for like sixty baht and it be the best taste of fucking thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you're just there, like, oh, we just paid this money for lobster and it cost this much. And when, when you know, sixty baht can get you something just. Well, we good. did find some good food today. We did. You guys will see the video of that. But I mean. The food courts are unreal with the stuff that's in there. Yeah, there's so much food. So much stuff. And then there's loads of new stuff that you haven't tried. You go and try it. Um, you've been very adventurous this trip. If, if James does good editing, we got all this that we're talking about. He'll add it in, oh, add it in. in the video. So. <laughs> the food. <laughs> yeah, the food And he do the food montage. <laughs> yeah, even the food court, we did that little... We wanted to do a, um, a video on eating like weird shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In Thailand, and we're thinking. I I told James before we came that that would be a good uh, video to do on YouTube. Yeah, is you know there's there's bugs at the end of the street, and you mentioned like the alligator. Yeah, yeah. So we we, we decided okay, let's go to Khao San Road, uh, which is kind of famous for like street food and stuff like that. And so we thought, oh, let's go, let's check it out. Um, and first of all, it was like the most touristy place we'd ever been. Yeah, and it was kind of dead. It was boring. There was no Thai people. Uh, the food we, we went to a bar we had some spring rolls that were quite nice but yeah. but every place looked like it served the same meal and we got munched by mosquitoes at the bar we got absolutely munched by mosquitoes um, you had to like intervene as well in a weird yeah, situation yeah there was a situation that oh, too bad we didn't get it on video because at the timing it was right when James went to the bathroom mm-hmm. there was two Japanese kids sitting in front of us and there was a German couple talking to them so we I thought they were friends at first and and then I noticed they didn't really communicate well. So it was like, oh, they must have met here or they joined them on the table. And we're just sitting, I'm just sitting there. James goes to the bathroom and the Japanese kid turns around, looks at me and starts as lipping like, help, help. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I don't think he knew I took, spoke Japanese. So I, so I asked him in Japanese, what's wrong? He goes, oh, can you help us? I'm like, whoa, yeah. So I stood up, I went to him, I said, what's wrong? And I'm talking in Japanese so the German people can't understand. And he was saying that they're trying to force us to go out with them. And I said, just don't. I said, do you want me to do? I said, I can tell them no. I said, I said I'll, what I'll do is I'll just tell them that you guys have to go. And the guy said, thank you. He, they both got up. They started, they stood up. And then I, I told it to the German couple that, you know, they forgot that they had other you know, obligations. They have to go meet somebody. And so the Japanese guy kind of went, oh, sorry, sorry. And he left. It was really weird, though. The, yeah. the, the reaction of the German couple, you know, Super the natural strange. reaction you would have is, oh, thank you for explaining, or or they would look at me and say, oh, wow, what's wrong with them? Or, you know, yeah. either way, whichever way they're feeling. Mm-hmm. Why didn't they tell us, you know? But they didn't even look at me. No. Like you said, you saw the lady look at me over. Yeah, she I gave you, like, this mean stare later. Like, yeah, about five so, minutes later, she turned and looked at you and was like... So I almost feel like I might have cock-blocked them in there oh not a cock block but you know like a block scam block them yeah maybe. scam block them from so yeah the, the, but the Japanese kid seemed like he was really scared mm-hmm. the funny thing is he never he didn't have no idea who I was it'd be funny if he did find probably, out one day probably like the first Japanese person that hasn't recognized you because everywhere we go and there's Japanese people instant sign instant sign instant sign yeah. and then it has been a good mixture though because some of them have been like actually old school fans that recognize yeah, Henson from yeah. even like one guy was like Shuto, um, the guy was Pride, um, and then there's the Breaking Down fans. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Breaking Down. <laughs> a lot of Breaking Down fans. Um, so yeah, you are getting a lot of looks at the moment. Yeah, definitely so the, different from last year. Yeah, so going back to the food. Yes. Kaosong Road. Oh, there was yeah. the alligator and 
check out that video. But that real freaking alligator that was like like opened up. It looks so nasty. Yeah, and of course we've seen the bugs in Bangkok, but we're kind of like I'm I'm dating down to eat a scorpion. Really? But yeah, I'm, I would do it, but it's like I would rather not. Mm-hmm. And we, we walk by, we walk by like three or four of those, <laughs> pretty luck. much like oh okay, like we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're both acting like we forgot we said we're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah. And then when we saw the crocodile, the alligator, it was pretty much like you know what? <laughs> yeah, let's it's... try to figure something out. So we did something at the mall. Yeah, we did. Because the thing is, the alligator just looked like he'd been sat out there for like six, five, six hours. It's like, I don't want food poisoning. And that was the real, rest of the trip. That was a real alligator. It was a real alligator. You could see the texture of like... Yeah, this. and it was opened up. The The whole body was opened up. You could see all the white meat coming up. Oh. I, I would be open to try an alligator, but like maybe at a restaurant. <laughs> like, just, just not out on the street. Like, And the guy's doing it it was just kind of like the way they were handling the alligator it wasn't like his try this delicious taste it was like hey eat this weird shit yeah same yeah, with the scorpions yeah. and stuff they like walk around and you could it's almost like people look like they wouldn't eat that like themselves so it's like i think they do you know they, maybe. they the people just eat it it's crazy but yeah so maybe so, yeah. next next time maybe we build up a little bravery or or adventurous <laughs> feelings and Maybe the next trip. Or well, we get other people to do it, which is what we talked about earlier. Maybe we'll bring Yuji or Koichi and uh, have them do it and we video their reaction. Sorry, Yuji. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we did. We went to the shop about instead. And they didn't really work out. Usually, in these food videos, people usually try something like, ah. But actually, it was a complete... But I think it was pretty cool because um, mm. no, it wasn't like you didn't get... A good reaction of eating weird shit but it was neat because we i've eaten i've been to thailand over a decade back and forth back and forth numerous times but there's stuff that i've never eaten i haven't tried it and i have no idea what it tastes like and i have an idea but as we know today we think that the thing i thought was gonna be the best was the worst and i thought the thing i thought was gonna be the worst was actually the best yeah so it's real deceiving but yeah yeah i mean that was actually kind of neat doing that yeah we might have to do it again tomorrow <laughs> yeah if we see something yeah we're gonna do it again and add some, or add some more to the video that started actually our meal yeah yeah it did there's that when that's we filmed we, that it was like 10 a.m and that's <laughs> what we found out walking through the mall we're actually gonna find other stuff that we might be able to film and we found the this um i i had to try it because i feel like there's there's only in japan you can get great meat and oh yeah 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 and Thai, and Thai it was a there's a shabu shabu or sukiyaki place in in, in the mall and the, the the picture was like marbled grade a wagyu meat and i i always i have experience already in, in hawaii that they show that meat and it comes out that's not the meat that comes out and as they were cutting it and we saw it, it was like oh that does look like good meat and poo and that yeah. thing came you could tell i could tell straight off hand that this is top grade meat it's no joke and it was mm-hmm. super good in Siam Paragon, so shopping center, nice yeah. shopping center. Worth, worth checking out. Um, it's funny though because you said before about uh, you've been coming here over a over a decade. I think it's actually more than twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. So two thousand one, I think, was my first trip. <laughs> What's funny is that Ensign has never done any of like the tourist stuff. Ever. Ever, yeah. Because it was always like training trips and stuff, right? Yeah, like, I mean... Crazy nights out. <laughs> yeah, if anything, at first it was the strip joints, <laughs> the, you know, the bars, and then training camp, yeah. hotel sleep, massages. That's it. That's all yeah. it, was. it was. I was never thought about what is there to sightsee in Bangkok. Because mm-hmm. for me, Bangkok was training and massages. Pretty much that was the main things for me, training and massages. And now it's like no training but massages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I's, um, but no, it's interesting because uh, we actually did do something. We have the same opinion on kind of like touristy stuff, right? Where we were like, should we go see that tower and just see like what that looks like with the, the glass floor? And we literally were there probably 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Had a lot of people sitting down. and just, Yeah. Well, half of me was... We just one. went to the glass floor. That was it. If you guys ever saw the show Chevy Chase, a national lampoon, the vacation where the, all the family wants to go to the Grand Canyon and you pretty much you look over the Grand Canyon and there's nothing else yeah yeah so the family wanted to, he wanted to go to like this amusement park and the family mm-hmm. wanted to Grand Canyon he was straight up like 
fighting them the whole time. No, let's go to, to Wally World or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then he finally gave in. He went to the Grand Canyon. And it's like, everyone's standing by the Grand Canyon like, wow. And Chevy <laughs> Chase is like, literally five seconds like, Okay, let's go. <laughs> so you know, I can I can see that uh, yeah. that feeling because that that's how I would probably be. I mean, I'd be amazed at the Grand Canyon, but it's like pretty much you look at it and it's what else are you gonna do? I said, okay, um, I saw it. Yeah, let's go. Well, we we kind of said that about the temples as well. Where we were like, should we go to the temple? And it's like we can see one from there. <laughs> yeah. okay. I can see us, you know, walking right through the temple and five minutes be done with the grounds. Like, okay, let's go. So I'm willing to go to a temple, but not. For, jump in a car yeah. for a couple hours and no, you know no, go no. see a temple you know so we just yeah but yeah so the so sky the skywalk was pretty amazing yeah it was actually really cool it actually was worth the money to go check out oh yeah you know, for you know. sure man and not the, the yeah. ele- one one the first thing that caught me was the elevator was yeah. so fast yeah because you could just see the floors going one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah it was yeah, so fast was- and then the other thing that intrigued me was the that freaking uh, skywalk. You know, I, I I'm thinking the glass is probably about three to four inches thick. Yeah. But still, there was no. You would think that the glass would have like support beams going across. Yeah. But there was no. It was like huge, like almost like almost like the size of like uh, maybe two single beds put together. Mm-hmm. And it's like one whole plane of glass before it's connected to the next one, and there's no support bars. And you stand on that, and you're pretty much looking straight down 78 floors. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I so I went on that just I wanted to experience the look and look down, and I was like, okay, I've experienced it. That's it. I'm good. <laughs> and we got off. So you and you did the same. Thing, same, and then it was just like, man, let's go. That's it. <laughs> like, and you know, we, I got to see that we saw the, the, the we. Walked around the whole building, saw all four angles of the view, mm. stood on that um, glass, and yeah, I mean, it was time to go. What else do you need? But yeah, no, it's a nice place, right? It's- but the amazing thing is, the packet we bought, I think it was one thousand eighty baht, and it was for the to go. You can go up to the top, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of times the tourist attractions, like the roller coasters, they they'll tell you you take a free picture. Yeah. But then when you leave, you gotta buy the picture if you want it. They'll take it for free, but if you want it, you take it home. You gotta pay, pay for it if you want to take it home. But it was amazing because we were actually gonna not take the picture. No, it was like free, but we're not gonna get that. But I was saying, um, yeah, you know what? Let's, let's take it and see what it looks like. Because then yeah. I asked the guy, what is it gonna look like? He said, you're gonna be like on the top of the building. Yeah. So I said, okay, we'll we'll take that. We took it, and as we left, we could look at the picture. So we figured we'd just look at it. And being the that guy that's trying to you know economize and save money, I was thinking, okay, we didn't need the picture. We can take him with the phone on the screen. Mm-hmm. So I was about to do that, and the girl kind of said that, oh yeah, we, should, we can download the pictures. Like, how much? She said for free. I'm like, whoa. So they actually, that whole thing, the ticket allowed us to go all the way up, check out the sky tree. I mean, <laughs> check out the skywalk, and then Amazing. you could stay up there. As long as you want, had a souvenir place you could buy souvenirs, which we didn't. No. <laughs> and, and you got those pictures the, the, for the the memory of the yeah the thing. Yeah. So yeah. it was actually really good. It was cool. It was a cool thing to do. I was kind of surprised that um the uh, those pictures are free. Yeah. And share some of the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Now we've covered a lot of ground while we've been here. Though we've been doing like 20,000 steps every day and we've yeah. been using the subway we've been using uh, the taxis using the tuk-tuks and uh, last night we had a bit of a hairy experience on a tuk-tuk <laughs> where fucking basically the guy didn't listen to Ensign and he went on the wrong road and started driving up a highway like oh, a, yeah. almost like like a motorway in the UK and we had to back off the, the... and he had to reverse down and we were just there like cars just going by the opposite oh, way yeah. yeah that was super scary what was funny though was the reason why we were going right we were going to see your niece yeah um, my niece Tegan is uh, in this uh, reality show it's like an elimination reality show it's like a talent uh, thing it's called uh, Strong Asia mm. and she's in the competition with uh, I started off with 72 other girls and now Whoa. I think they're down to 29 Whoa. and she's still in so and so cool. you know correct fingers crossed that I think they're going to eventually narrow it down to 9 
but yeah, so she's still hanging in there. We got to, it was neat because I got to meet all her friends that when I'm watching those uh, Chuang Asia videos, I can see her, those friends. So I met, I met Jasmine and there's a bunch of girls that I met and oh, Rika, I think Ninka or something. And I mean, I, now, I, now I, I feel more personal when I see the videos of them dancing and singing. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of cool, man. The funny thing for me was that um, Ensign brought them some Krispy Kremes. But the, he was messaging her kind of like, how do we get this to you? Cause the, cause it, because it's like such a popular reality show. They're very strict on who, like having, they can't do anything, right? They're basically like... Yeah, well, I guess the reality shows are big. They, they film and they air later. Yeah. And it kind of kills the whole thing if they, the, the leakage goes on, who makes what, what happens. Mm -hmm. So they, they, you know, not that the girls are going to be dishonest, but it's just so natural to text your friend when something good happens to you. Yeah. So they take away their phones. They're not allowed out. And they're not allowed to really get snacks. So, you know, we got to give a little, you know, things to them. And it was funny because yeah, yeah. she, she, when I said, how, if I can't go to the floor you're at, she said, oh, you can say hi from the bottom floor. I was like, okay, but how do I get you the stuff? And she said, you're going to lower down, lower down a rope to the fourth floor. So and when he showed me, I thought she was like taking the piss because I was like, what do you mean a rope? I think I'd like throw a rope down kind of thing. And it was exactly that. They threw a rope down, you tied it around the bag of donuts and they pulled it up. And, they and the funny them. thing is, when while we were there, there was another Thai family that came to visit the Thai girls over there. Yeah, and they did the exact, exact same, thing. same thing. And they had their own rope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. So, yeah. So that was a that was interesting. We'll probably um, after we finish this podcast, um, I got to message her and see if she wants to get some some healthy snacks. So yeah, hopefully we go there and uh, see her again. Fair play to her though. That's, it's not it's actually like super hard like all the singing the dancing and then also oh, it's the, tough like, isolation it's like, tough because when they really when well. they decided they're going up it was pretty much done in within in a week so she had to say goodbye to her family and her friends yeah pack up what she thinks she needs and the thing is, is if you get cut right away you're going home like in a month Whoa. but she's been there 80 days now 80 days yeah, yeah because she's been winning and there's a lot of girls already that more than half already went home but I mean, for her to have to pick up and just leave and then not know, you know, when I was arrested, which is so different, but when I, was <laughs> when I was arrested going to prison, the hardest part for me was not knowing how long I was going to be in. You yeah. know, like if I, if I knew I was, okay, you're only going to be in three, 30 days. I would suck it up easy, but I didn't know how long I was going to be in. I didn't know if I was going to get on three. I didn't know the, the, the rumor was that I was going to be into three to four years. Mm -hmm. And that that pain is hard, and for her to not know when she's coming home, yeah, to be true. in this, in the, I mean, undecided, and just have to just go on week by week, mm -hmm. that's super hard. So you know, props to her for yes. you know being there, and it, it, she looked really good last night. She was really happy. She mm -hmm. had friends. Yeah. So you know, I took a video to show my parents. So she's they could, super talented, right? Like I saw the yeah, video. You showed oh, me the video. Yeah. Like she can stuff. dance. She can okay. sing. I mean, she songwrites. It's amazing. Voice, yeah. So. She's beautiful. Singing in Thai as well. Yeah. And then when she did that greeting in Chinese, yeah. Thai, and Japanese, and then in English, she's like, whoa. Right. <laughs> That's hard to do, man. Future superstar. So. Yeah, so that was awesome. Good to see her again today. So that, that was a, a, another thing that was a big supplement to the trip. But it was one of those things that we didn't know if she was going to still be in it. Yeah. But I oh. was thinking, oh, if, you, if she's still in, I'm going to go up in April. Yeah. And that was in January when we talked. And it's like, ah, yeah. If, I guess if you're still in it, good thing, yeah. But we might not be able to see you. So mm -hmm. we're, it's amazing that we actually got to see her. It's funny because I thought it was just to drop off the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when, oh, yeah. when they put it up, I said, okay, see you And Come she's like, day. you're going? And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, Oh, but, I mean, I thought it was more like a secret thing that you're not supposed to do that. So we're yeah. sneaking it up to you. So, yeah. ah, sneak it up. Okay, see you. Bye. But she goes, you're going? I'm like, yeah, well, what am I supposed to do? She goes, you can, we can talk. I'm like, oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, we can talk. We can talk yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we stayed for about about 20 minutes, yeah? Yeah, while the tuk tuk driver was waiting as well. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, I told the tuk tuk driver, we'll be right back because I thought I was going to drop it off and come back. Yeah, and you know, the, the, of course, the tuk tuk driver wanted more money than we agreed upon, so I did pay him a little more, but it was cool. Everything turned out really well. Yeah, you have a really good system for kind of how you treat people here, because obviously there's quite a lot of people that are like asking for money here and there, and yours is always like 
like if they don't tip you tip them like if they don't ask for anything you tip them more yeah yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. whereas if, yeah which is cool so so yeah um what else was there um fuck there's so much there's so much if oh I tell you what, a funny story so when we were kind of planning this trip and uh, when we first met we were talking about different stuff to film <laughs> and and this was like yo it'll be cool It'd be great if we did an interview with a lady boy. But well, I was well, like, well, I saw something on on TikTok, YouTube, yeah. TikTok, or you know, yeah. it's YouTube. I saw something on YouTube that the guy interviewed the lady boy, right. and he asked a lot of questions that people want to know but can't ask. Mm -hmm. But he didn't ask as much questions as I would have wanted to ask. Okay. So I, and the way he did it was so you know it wasn't like he was paying them for sex or anything. He was paying them, but it was just to have dinner and a chat. Mm -hmm. And I guess he had an understanding with the, that lady boy that he's just going to ask whatever. Mm -hmm. and she answered pretty much everything and <laughs> I thought oh that'd be actually pretty cool and I, I thought to myself at the time like yeah we'll just go into like a lady boy strip club or something find a cool one to talk to that's really friendly and maybe tell her you know we'll pay for you to come out and you will pay for like like if you were going to have sex with a guy and we pay you for that but we're not going to have sex we're just going to have your time and just talk to you. And I thought, yeah, then if we can find a really friendly one that's so willing to ask, answer all the questions, I'm down for it. And fuck, man. And we still got a couple of nights, so. <laughs> oh, no, I, I just, I just, I don't know. It's just hard because the guy that introduced, uh, interviewed a lady or looked like a lady, uh, like a lady lady. Mm -hmm. But last night when we tried to walk, it went to Nana Plaza, which is a place that has a lot of clubs. And there's a certain lady boy one, so we went into the lady one with the idea. You say that, went in. Let's just caveat that uh, and say like poked our head in and went. Well, okay, we're, maybe we're not. gonna go in a lady boy bar because I figured if we sit in there, we can find someone that's friendly and able to talk about. And we walked in and the stage it. Ah, it was. It kind of intimidating. Scary, right? yeah. It was <laughs> yeah, kind of scary because. Yeah. They're, they're, you look at their face, they look like ladies, but then some of them are big, some of them are big hands. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just for me, it was like, it was just like a roll, like, oof. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and we just turned around and went out, and I pretty much thought that I'm scratching that idea. <laughs> but now I'm thinking, I'll maybe get one more try and see, but how to, oof. It's tough, man. I don't know. What, it's uh, hard to break that ice. I mean, one, I guess I'm not confident with masculinity. Yeah, I, I guess not. I, I guess I not. feel a little awkward being in there and people see me sitting there talking yeah. to a lady boy could, thinking that could, I know it's a lady boy. Because you're in how many people recognize Ensign as well. Ah, Yahoo no. News. <laughs> I, <didn't know> it. <laughs> I mean, no, no, more than I mean, that when we walked in, there was no Japanese people in there. So for me, that had nothing to do with it. Hmm. It was just that idea of being in there knowing that there's all men in there or lady boys and sitting there and talking to them in a way like if i could you know put my conversation out on the speaker i would love to so they know what we're talking about <laughs> not having these guys sitting looking looking at whether they know me or not looking at the whole check that dude out talking to the lady boy he's He's kind of interested, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, is that my masculinity? But yeah, I, I just have a real uncomfortable feeling of yeah actually being in that situation. So we'll see. What? Yeah, we'll see. So yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. I mean, the trip's been amazing. Been good fun very different from the last trip right the last trip was just yeah gangsters and, and i've been taking a lot of, <laughs> i've been taking a lot of videos and pictures so this is yeah. like a way to kind of think of okay sky tree or so it was a little abrupt ending but uh we're actually pretty done i was just flipping through the phone checking if any pictures of anything we missed but we actually caught everything maybe not the nitty gritty details we might talk about later on but yeah it was pretty much done and We'd like to thank everyone for watching and subscribe and share and like Couple and signing off from Bangkok pretty much. We got two more days, so anything exciting happens, we'll update all of you. Personally. All right. Thanks for watching.